Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's wall. Uh, let me go ahead and see who that is. I apologize for that. Okay, welcome everyone to today's um, uh, webinar on uh, timber harvesting uh, with the Cook County Farm Bureau. Again, my name is Debbie Volz, and we are grateful that you chose to join us here today. If you haven't already, we're gonna ask if you could please mute your microphone just so that um, Weston has the best possible opportunity to talk as much as possible. Um, we are very fortunate to have Weston Edwards from Walnut Timber Buyers joining us here today to get us better educated on the uh, industry of timber and harvesting practices. And I am just going to go ahead and turn the uh, program over to Weston in one second. Just everyone, if there is a chat box, um, if you do have questions, there will be time at the end to address all the questions. And so you could go ahead and type them in there and we'll address them. But Liston also said, if you wanna turn your mics off and interrupt, um, you can, but we do know that there is a time limit for some folks. So um, we would like to address them at the end if at all possible. And I will ask again that we keep our mics uh, muted, but feel free to turn your videos on. And without further ado, Weston, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I'm really excited to talk about the industry in general and, uh, you know, get to talk about timber from the perspective of my family business and everything. It's a, um, it's a big honor. So thank you guys for setting it up. And uh, yeah, like I said, we're just going to do a general like market overview, give you guys some context for, you know, where we operate, the space that we operate in and uh, what opportunities there are for people, uh, for landowners in 2021. So let's just get into it here. The topics we're going to cover today, <clears throat> I just want to briefly talk about who we are at Walnut Timber Buyers, give you guys some context there. And then, you know, like I said, do a general hardwood market overview, um, just really giving you like just contextualizing it. Um, market outlook for 2021, um, you know, if you're looking at uh, timber appraisals for in this year, you know, what to expect and some pricing and things like that. Um, one of my main jobs is, you know, interacting with our clients and educating people about this industry. So uh, that's what I do for a day job. So that's why I'm really excited to be here. This is a kind of a evolution of that um, role. So I want to tackle some frequently asked questions that I know, you know, pop up pretty often. And then I want to spend like the last 10 minutes or so of the presentation just actually going over the actual process of logging because I feel like that's you know, it's a pretty nebulous process and a lot of people don't under, you know, don't have an understanding of it and it can be scary. So I just want to disentangle that and add some clarity and then just close with uh, some of the additional benefits, you know, other than the financial reasons for logging. So who we are, uh, Walnut Timber Buyers is a commercial forest product company. Uh, we're family owned and operated uh, by mainly myself and my father, Keenan Edwards. And, uh, you know, my my brother, um, sister, and my brother-in-law and my mom are all involved too. But, you know, we have combined, you know, oh, between me and my dad, 40-some years of experience in the industry. So that's just to give you a little background. But uh, let's start uh, just uh, talking about the hardwood market here. So logging is Illinois, one of Illinois' best-kept secrets. I always say this because, you know, being, I'm 28 years old and all of my peers, all the people I went to college with, people are always like, you harvest timber you log like people have no clue that it's I mean I mean people who you know own land and things like that obviously will be more familiar with it but it is a best kept secret but so according to the Illinois Forestry Development Council's report from I think it was 2010 but this was reported in 2013 um, forestry itself is a 23 billion dollar industry in Illinois that just kind of gives you some uh, little contextual information there this comprised of six sectors. So, uh, you know, the logging being the first, the first uh, step there, you know, um, actually extracting that natural resource from the timber, uh, just like mining is the first step in many, you know, chains. Um, but then we go into, where's my pointer here? Um, you know, solid wood products, that'd be like mills, pulp and paper mills, uh, people who make furniture, I actually just talked to a guy, a furniture maker today uh, urban forestry, you know, that's tree services, tree removal, and then, you know, miscellaneous forest products uh, are all included. That That's more like small-time crafts and things like that. So, but the logging sector um, was, you know, accountable for 122 million of that industrial output um, out of that 23 billion. Uh, not a ton, but it is the, uh, it's the one uh, 
that's just the one sector, but more relevant to what we're talking about today, um, according to that same body, who's really one of the only places in Illinois that tracks a lot of this stuff that I'm aware of, or I thought was the best resource, um, annual sales of hardwood logs from private landowners exceeded $50 million in 2020. So, you know, as a, uh, probably compared to some other industries, that's probably not a ton, but at the same time, uh, for how niche of an activity it is and how niche of a business it is, it's, uh, it's uh, quite a bit. So that just gives you a little context there. So here's just kind of a formal definition of what the logging sector is to get oriented. You know, it harvests timber and delivers it to the mills and foreign exporters for the creation of wood products, you know, veneer, lumber, plywood, fence posts, wood chips, et cetera. And we'll go over more, you know, the difference in veneer and lumber logs and stuff like that as the presentation goes on. But that just kind of gives you uh, an idea. But the ultimate goal is, you know, we're the first first line. My dad always described it as from the stump to the mill. We're going into the woods, you know, finding those natural resources, appraising them, and then bringing those raw materials out into the global economy. And that's really anything from, you know, basic housing materials like a red oak or a black oak two by four, all the way to insane luxury goods like, you know, eighty thousand dollar boardroom tables. I know a Korean family that that's all they do is make you know walnut boardroom tables and sell them to chinese executives and stuff so it's a very interesting place a uh, very uh, it's a very interesting market so um so now that kind of just gives you some overall definitions and contextualization of the industry but now i want to talk about you know in particular what drives the market the real stars of the show uh the trees themselves so we're talking about high quality hardwoods in the midwest and without going into a you know, full-blown biology lesson here. I just wanted to uh, briefly go over what makes a hardwood tree a hardwood tree. So they're deciduous, meaning, you know, they lose their leaves in the autumn and regain them in the spring. They produce a covered fruit, you know, so like a walnut, an acorn, an apple, um, something like that. That's all a covered fruit. And they're broad-leaved, which is just what you think of when you think of a leaf rather than, you know, it's not pine or cedar. Um, is the real the real takeaway. So think trees like walnut, oak, ash, cherry, maple, hickory, etc., um, among others. But those are the primary ones that are commercially harvested. So I just want to take a quick second and show you guys some pictures here that I've taken um, of you know the real star of the show, black walnut trees. They're the most valuable hardwood species in Illinois and probably North America, but there could be some exception to that, but just rarer. Um, but uh, yeah, they're just, they're valued mainly for their aesthetics. I mean, they're, they're beautiful. The dark hardwood, uh, the dark heartwood is, is makes insanely beautiful furniture, um, high quality trees like this one. And we'll get into this more later, but you know, the difference between veneer and saw, saw log quality and things like that, a, a log like this will be used for, uh, to make very thin strips of veneer and things like that. It's highly valuable. Uh, but this is more just a slide to help you guys identify the trees themselves. Um, here you can see the the deep grooves in the black walnut bark, the beautiful, I love this, the, this is a beautiful example of a black walnut tree, but the, the, the light gray and the dark gray striation in the bark, the segmented leaves over here, as well as, you know, the, the scourge of everyone's yard and what dents everybody's mower blades, the black walnuts themselves. Um, so that just gives you um, some, some actual, uh, visuals there to visualize what we're talking about. Now on to white oak trees would be the second most valuable species of timber that we could uh, harvest. And both of these just kind of shows you just a little bit of the difference you can see in the bark types. Um, they can look a little different, but it's an oak tree like any other, you know, you see they have an acorn and the, the typical oak pattern leaf, but they're stark white. They stick out like a sore thumb, but you know, these are made into fine furniture, lumber. Um, you can veneer, make, you know, thin strips of veneer out of these. Um, but the only additional thing is if you uh, enjoy a nice Cabernet or a single malt scotch sometime, you have a logger to thank as well because, uh, you know, uh, they're made into uh, whiskey barrels and wine barrels. So uh, that's the only other thing. So other hardwoods, I mean, I did mention the other ones. Um, I didn't really show a picture of maple here. I should have, I just realized, but We've got red oak here. Um, you, can, every, can you see my pointer? Thumbs up? Okay, excellent. So here's a, a northern red oak. These are, you know, very routinely commercially harvested. I call these like the more staple hardwoods. They're not, they don't have as crazy of a market and they're not as valuable, but they do usually get logged routinely on most projects and they do have value. 
Um, so there's red oak, um, ash, which has unfortunately been pretty devastated by the boring beetle. Um, and we have been salvaging a lot of those on projects when you can. Um, and this is a hickory. Uh, one of my coworkers actually told me, he's like, you should take that picture of the hickory out because it looks exactly like the ash. And I was like, well, I was like, or I could demonstrate the point that trees can be kind of hard to identify. And I don't know if you guys can tell the difference, but just deeper grooves in the bark and so forth. So, but now that we've, so that kind of gives, we're kind of going down my funnel here of talking about, you know, the industry globally, the trees that we're interested in. And then now we're going to talk about actual logs. So, you know, you appraise trees and then you turn trees into logs. In Illinois, there's usually 2.7 logs per tree, a little under three on average. Um, but I wanted to, to just contextualize the actual grades that we're interested in. So veneer, I kind of have already mentioned, that's the, the, the top quality that we're after. This is one of the nicest logs I've ever purchased. Um, beautiful walnut veneer. Um, and I got another slide that will really break down what veneer and uh, saw logs are. But uh, so this just needs to be center hearted. It has to be defect free. It can't have limbs growing off of it. Um, they are, they're, they're rare, but I would say most, you know, large projects have anywhere from 10 to 30% veneer trees as possible. Um, but it's just a long checklist of perfection that goes into, you know, being able to market a log as a veneer log. So our next grade down from that would be what's a, a three-sided log, which is really just a veneer log that has a singular defect on one side. Um, so like on this log here, you can see it's very clear. This might actually have a second defect, but for the purpose of this, you can see this like limb was thrown right here. That means that the veneer knife at the veneer mill will not be able to cut through that. It would skip and therefore you can't, it would have to be sawn. Um, rather than peeled, which I'll show you here in a second. Tabletops is another grade of log, very interesting. Um, I have some, some friends in the industry who manufacture tables like this, as well as some uh, foreign clients that do, some export clients that do. Um, they have to be in excess of 37 inches in diameter, so very large uh, walnut trees, and we do find a few of them a year, but they're actually slabbed into really thick chunks and made into boardroom tables. Very fascinating process, and a lot of just beautiful stuff comes out of that uh that marketplace and then last but certainly not least is your literal run of the mill saw logs um have a few defects on them and they're you know just sawn on a radial saw into lumber so just uh that, like i had kind of alluded to i wanted to talk really just compare and contrast the veneer process versus a saw log and to me it's very fascinating um anybody is interested i could find some videos and stuff of it too um for later but Veneer logs are uh, chemically treated, uh, boiled uh, to where the, all the bark is removed, and they're actually put on a multi-million dollar lathe that spins the log, and a veneer knife meets it and actually peels it apart, like at the annual rings, into, you know, like really thin, like millimeter thin strips, which, you know, a veneer can then be layered over any other lesser material, and you have the aesthetic beauty of the, the walnut on the exterior. So that's what, you know, those beautiful, that fine example of that tree that's perfectly straight, perfectly dead hearted, that's the only thing that can be peeled in that way. Um, more routinely, um, this is something you might be more familiar with when you think of lumber or sawmills as a radial sawmill. That's when, you know, you're putting this log on here and it's actually being sawn into boards uh, to make lumber. So when we're doing most timber evaluations too, you're looking for the, the main things is just how much veneer versus how many saw logs are on that project if that makes sense. So uh, really quick, I just wanted to talk very generally about pricing and realize that there's a lot of caveats. Nature does not really like to be pigeonholed perfectly. So this is more about what 80%, I would say, of the trees we sell go for somewhere. When we're talking about quality walnut trees that are the right size and so forth, they go for you know, $500 to $2,000 per tree. Understanding that some grades can go for significantly more, this is just what's routinely out there in my experience. Um, and I didn't, I should have probably explained, you know, board footage and things like that, but that is the measurement of volume in our industry on Doyle scale. Um, but on average, you know, per board foot, which is the standard unit of uh, volume that we use, Walnut can average really on a project anywhere between $2 and $2 and 77 cents in this last year when you, you know, are averaging all the grades together. 
quality white oak trees, you know, they tend to trail behind walnut. Um, same thing, you know, same caveats here. Some can go for more, but that $400 to $1,400 range is pretty typical of, you know, probably 80% of what you'd see. And averaging in between $1.20 to $1.50 a board foot is, is common right now. And, you know, those assorted hardwoods are going to be more, they then trail behind. So think like, you know, your hickory, maple, ash and things like that, they do trail behind those as far as pricing and or you know, oftentimes sub a dollar per board foot on average, but still they're very common trees and they do have a place um, as profit centers for landowners as well as they're just staples of the hardwood economy and so many building materials, so many essential building materials are made out of those red oak and hickory species, so. All right, so that kind of brings us to, you know, a little education about and contextual information and now talk about the market for 2021 and the process. Um, so the hardwood market has really been for the last, you know, five years has been very stable. Walnut pricing has been good. Um, a lot of people have cashed in over the years. Um, but 2020 really saw demand and prices increase, even though it was touch and go with a lot of you know, the whole, I mean, obviously every business has been affected by a global pandemic and 2020 and trade trade uh, war kind of stuff and some tariffs and things like that. But even through all that, it's a, such a robust marketplace. I mean, it really did. Uh, uh, we just saw prices kind of dip for a minute when the coronavirus first hit and people weren't answering their phones because they were in lockdown and then everything just went back to normal. But really that trend has continued into 2021. And there for lumber, there are, you know, uh, there are bodies that uh, monitor that and report on lumber prices. There is not really that same level of rigor for logs. So most of what, unfortunately, what I'm really quoting you here is just that market demand is high. That from my perspective, I mean, I've get, I have a lot of people contacting me. It's just really due to this, just the sheer number of people soliciting us for service um, on the, you know, the export, the importer end or the domestic sawmill end, people, the demand is very high. Um, so, going to change gears here and just talk about answer some of these frequently asked questions. I'm sorry this I didn't really know where to put this. It seems a little disjointed, but when you're actually considering harvesting your timber, um, when's the best time to harvest is a you know a question I get a lot. So September through February is definitely the prime time. However, in recent years, we have been able to uh, log more uh, year round. It's really the crops being in the fields is our biggest limiting factor. That and deer hunting. Um, we're very respectful of you know deer hunters and trying to stay out of their way. Uh, but also those are the two main obstacles. But if, if ground is pastured, if there's accessibility to the timber, we can get pretty creative and still get in there even when it's cropped in. Um, but September through February, when the ground's tight, frozen, you hope in Illinois, um, is the best time to, uh, to to get work done. Or you could be like right now where it was muddy forever. Now it's so cold that equipment won't start. So that's always fun. So is there a minimum acreage that we would do? Uh, not necessarily, but there is no real minimum per se. But I would say that the average farm we harvest is, you know, probably like Oh, is 50 acres. That's just because we do so many farms. It's more common for a landowner to probably own that much, but we do a lot of like really big recreational deer hunting properties, you know, and some pretty big farms, but it's really more about the volume of trees is the limiting factor. So my dad would always, uh, as would always, you know, quip that I've harvested, you know, 80 trees on five acres and five trees on 80 acres. It's really just what natural resources there. So there isn't really like a minimum job size, but, uh, most companies are going to require about 20 trees, a few semi loads to make it feasible. And that's really just a logistics constraint um, for the most, for the most part, um, if that makes sense. Um, the hauling and the labor is very expensive. So you need at least some minimum volume, but some jobs of 10, if their quality can be done as well. And residential trees, I get a lot of calls, you know, people who want to market their trees, but really that is j only limited by how close they are to a home and if you can meet that minimum volume where we can at least get a semi load. Um, so if you have 10 trees and they're in a backyard or they're in a place that's not going to, you know, because we're, we're not a tree service where we're not insured to climb trees and top them and things like that, that they, they do if it's very close to a home. But if it's in a yard or anything like that and people want them removed, we can definitely, we can definitely make that happen. So now before we kind of talk about, um, like actually getting into the process of harvesting uh, timber and going through that step-by-step. Step. I just wanted to kind of reorient to walnut timber buyers of what we do. 
Um, you know, we're not pr probably not the largest, but we are up there for, you know, producers of walnut and white oak logs in the Midwest. Um, we buy both standing timber, like what we're talking about today, but another side of our business is purchasing cut logs from other loggers who've been contracted to cut, you know, timber off of private landowners. And that can, you know, attest to the robustness of our markets as well, that we're able to purchase other people's logs. Um, like I had mentioned, we log large tracts of, you know, farmland, recreational deer hunting properties, things like that. We kind of specialize in and we can do those, you know, those smaller 10 to 20 uh, tree jobs as well. So then I, I kind of mentioned this with the uh, buying cut logs, there's really no middleman. So for a lot of people, you know, companies like ours end up being the middleman for a lot of loggers because they're not actually, it takes a lot of infrastructure to be able to both, you know, get the logs harvested and market them. You know, we're a larger company than a lot of, uh, you know, logging outfits are. So we are able to sell, you know, directly to overseas importers but also domestic sawmills. And we just try to stay dynamic and fluid. And I think that our clients really benefit from that because it is a fairly volatile market. So like with in 2020 with uh, the tariffs and things like that, it tariffs change log pricing really quickly, but I didn't have to change my pricing because I then that actually boosted the demand for domestic sawmills. And then their pricing, we said, well, this is what we were getting overseas. What can you offer? And they just matched it. And then, you know, everything I was able to offer, you know, client A, the same price as client B, even though it was, you know, really, uh, it really should have fluctuated and changed. So just enables us, like I said, to stay dynamic and offer a real true market pricing and not just be dedicated to whatever I'm getting from that guy is what, you know, we're going to stick with. So, all right. So now I just wanted to talk about the actual, the process. I mean, this is what I was raised doing. This is something that's so niche. I'm really excited to share it with you guys, just how the actual, you know, step-by-step -step kind of how a project works. So starting with the appraisal process, actually, you know, determining what the trees are worth um, and walking a timber. Familiarize you, if you're not familiar already with the actual process of logging, uh, what it looks like and what's involved. And then just briefly talk about payment and the, you know, security and how some of that works. And then um, talk about the actual transportation, how we remove them from the property and uh, finish the finish the project. So everything always starts with getting an appraisal done. It's really the only way that you can know, you know, what is, what is on a property is to thoroughly walk every inch of it and physically inspect every tree that is marketable. So that involves taking measurements of them, you know, determining how many board feet there are, there is in that tree. Um, then also to, you know, assigning a grade to that tree, like we've talked about is, is this, is this primarily going to be a veneer tree, three-sided or saw, and then recording that data and then actually marking the trees. This is actually my sister and my brother, Montana and Cole. Um, but the, uh, marking the trees is then important too, you know, so you don't accidentally mark the same one twice. And then when the timber cutter actually goes in there to do the job, you're just mark, you know, uh, cut all the trees marked in orange or whatever color it happens to be. So something I spearheaded in the last couple of years that I'm really proud of that I want to share with you guys, and I just think it brings people a lot of security is that, you know, we use GPS to market your, all your property lines. And then, you know, we double confirm that with the landowners because you don't ever want to, you know, the worst case scenario is cutting a tree that doesn't belong to the person that you're working for. And it does happen, but it does not happen with us because you just very you have to be on top of that aspect of it but we're also able to mark the locations of the trees which i think is really awesome and it really gives people just a you know it's so nebulous when a guy comes up and says hey i'm gonna harvest this many trees off your farm and you have no idea where they're coming from and you have to go walk the whole thing to be able to like figure that out and double confirm that so this just helps you to like actually visually represent like here is where i tracked myself walking here is the location of each individual tree that we're going to harvest off this project and i just i just really enjoy uh, providing that service because it does, it gives me security, gives them security. And then when the logger goes in there too, he just knows exactly where every tree is and there's no guesswork. So by the time the appraisal process is done, what we're trying to provide you with is the number of each species of tree that we marked for harvest, um, which is critical. If you take one thing away from this presentation and you don't ever do any business with us, but you do with another logging company, I just encourage you just always get a tree count. It's amazing how many people sell timber in Illinois with somebody will throw out a dollar figure and somebody will be like, well, that sounds good. I really want to make that much money, but then they don't tell them how many trees they're going to cut to achieve that number. And it really is mind boggling, but it does happen. So always get a tree count, be very certain that you're, you know, exactly how many trees are going to be removed from your property. 
So we try to give you the number that's going to be harvested and then a breakdown of those grades, you know, what proportion is veneer versus saw logs, and then a minimum guarantee of what those trees are worth. And like I said, you know, always offer up to, up to date market pricing, but we do offer conservative estimates. So our estimates are always something that's a very real world number, but it does have a cushion because it is nature and there can be systematic issues with timbers that you cannot tell that even the most trained observer cannot tell. So I always like to have that cushion, but we're, you know, pretty much universally able to deliver on a price uh, to over deliver on a price that we give. Um, and I have a lot of references to, you know, back up that just that so um just a quick before we actually talk about the logging process um i just want to talk about minimum footprint because you know that is unless somebody is explicitly wanting something clear cut to put in a food plot or to make more uh, farmland we don't clear cut we're only about going in there looking for those beautiful you know high dollar walnut and white oak trees and uh, just selecting the mature trees alone limits the number that will actually be removed most of our jobs is fewer than like three or well maybe more like four to three or four trees per acre is usually what's being harvested or lower than that. Some jobs is only one or two per acre. So that footprint's pretty minimal. Um, but you know, you make paths, minimal paths directly to the trees, use best practices for that treetop management because that is one of the only pieces of debris that is left behind is a stump, you know, that's about as close to the ground as possible, but there is a top left as well. Um, you're getting that main log, but you do have to cut that top off. But Best practice for that is to cut those tops up, create wildlife habitat out of them, get them off of the road, get them out of the way, lay them down to the ground. And the strategic placement of them can really help deer retention. That's one of the interesting things, like working with some deer hunters over the last few years and really trying to, and, and focusing on that is we've had a lot of good feedback about um, just generally brushing up some areas does help with deer retention. And that's one of the, what, but I'll never forget, like there was like this turn where people used to be like, well, we really don't want that brush in here. And then now I'm getting people like, I kid you not, where I had clients where he was like, well, can you cut that area harder? Can you make more of a mess? Because I would like the, the, the under the, uh, the brush for the deer. And I was like, wow, like that's, that's really awesome. But, uh, but yeah, it's just, just best practice kind of stuff. So you know, our logging crews are extremely experienced. I've uh, been working with them for a long time. Everybody's licensed, bonded, and insured like you need to be in Illinois. Um, but all trees are hand cut. And that's something that, I mean, I know maybe most people do know, but I do think it's interesting. You know, you see stuff on TV like swamp loggers or whatever these shows are. They use really big equipment, fella bunchers and all that kind of stuff. Um, every tree in Illinois is hand cut by a guy, by a man, by an experienced chainsaw man with a chainsaw. And I have immense respect for, you know, people who are, I mean, I can run a saw, but I am nowhere near, you know, on the level some of our guys are. But from there, the, you know, then they're actually, you know, skidded out of the timber. And uh, I hope this video will play right, but I do have a quick, oh, that might be very loud. Oh, it's very loud. I'm so sorry. So this is one of our guys, uh, Greg, cutting a really nice walnut veneer tree. And I just love this video because it, it took him about two minutes to, to sever this tree. But he does such an amazing, what he does is so amazing because he did everything there was so purposeful because a walnut veneer tree wants nothing more than to hit the fork and to split straight down the middle. Like it will, and it does, and it, it can happen. But what he did there was he, he leaves one piece of tree of, of meat hanging on, is able to pop that last spur is what it's called and land it right into another, another tree, gently cushioning it, slides right down, doing minimal damage to anything surrounding it, but ensuring that that tree gets on the ground in one piece. So Greg's, Greg's really good at what he does. So after somebody falls the tree, it's gonna be skidded out by using one of our log skidders. These are two of our biggest ones, um, but uh, we have several pieces of smaller equipment that are more nimble for smaller projects or for where they're necessary. But they'll be skidded out to a centralized log landing. Um, and then there, that's where you really work the logs or the, the trees over into logs. So here's a example of one of the log landings. We had just some beautiful walnut veneer trees and some beautiful white oak veneer trees we had the opportunity to purchase in the last year, I believe. I think these might've been, maybe those were in 2019, but um, yeah. So we'll identify a central location, you know, that uh, everything can be dragged out to, um, hopefully as close to a road as possible. And uh, that's where, you know, a lot of my job is before the loggers are in the woods and after. Um, so, you know, identifying them and then turning uh, trees into logs. So here I am out here, you know, rolling logs, things like that. But you actually 
you know, a lot of the expert knowledge then comes in and like what a lot of, uh, uh, is actually, you know, turning those trees into logs. So you have to know what end user will this be used for? Um, is this a veneer log? Will this be a three-sided log? What market will this one go to versus that one? And actually marking those up to where then, the, I believe you can see here where they're actually cut into logs. Um, then we always have skid steers or, you know, different things like that on the job to keep things tidy, keep roads clean, keep things built up. And then uh, as well as, you know, to sort the logs by grade and uh, get them moved and where you can inspect that actual, you know, internal wood quality and things like that. So that's getting towards, you know, towards the end of the project as they're, they're coming out. So one of the last parts of it um, is the grading and scaling. So we do appraise the trees standing, but then they're graded and scaled after that. Uh, point, which is actually, you know, that's when you can really truly determine, I can see the inside of the wood grain, I can tell exactly, I can see all sides of this log, and I can tell exactly what end user this log is for, then I can assign it a price, a serialized tag number, and know the exact amount of board footage in it and exactly what that log is worth. And that, you know, is the actual true figure that our clients are paid off of, if that makes sense. So that's why we do offer those conservative estimates, but then we can really tell what kind of what the project will gross at that point. So every individual log is graded and scaled, entered into that handheld computer. And then one of the things that, you know, I'm proud that we do is we're able to give our clients a detailed breakdown of their logs for their records that shows here's exactly what forest products were removed from your property. Here is the breakdown of the, the total number of board feet on the project, the proportion of grade of each log. So it's broken down by grade. Here's, you know, you had X number of walnut veneer logs at each price of each log totaling this much and so on and so forth. And it goes like that for all the grades that we discussed if they're on your property. And then just one other note on, you know, specifically how we do things. Our clients are paid in full before any forest products are removed from your property. So all of that assessment is done on site. Nothing leaves until, you know, you sign off on the project and you're paid in full. This is just industry best practice, in my opinion. So we also have, so after all that's done, uh, everything is, after everything's been inventoried, everything gets pre-hauled and stacked out by a road. So in the case of any inclement weather, you know, if stuff starts to melt or it gets really rainy, we're still able to get to those logs and they don't sit there forever. That's pretty critical. Um, and then transportation, we run all of our own trucks um, and there, you know, and uh, the, the timber is actually trucked, uh, trucked away to its final destination uh, or to a centralized yard, depending on what timber it is. So that kind of takes you through the whole process. I hope that all makes sense, but just, you know, from start to finish appraisal to stacking them up by the road, that's kind of, that's everything involved in it. Um, and I just wanted to close today with just a few quick additional benefits, you know, cause you know, it is a commercial enterprise. We're here to, to make people money and to, uh, uh, you know, help people to help uh, have the ability to reinvest in their farm if they want to. But uh, some of the additional benefits is the building of skid roads when done properly really does improve the accessibility of your farm. So like a lot of deer hunters and like, you know, some of my dad's friends and stuff like that, you know, we've, we've logged and then they put, they regrassed some of the roads and they can drive four wheelers and trucks through and things like that. Um, really nice. Um, the opening of the canopy promotes competition and new growth and a lot of deer hunters really value this because it does, I mean, some of the nicest timbers that you're in are just pass throughs for deer because if you're, you know, if, if you're oriented towards deer hunting. Um, so cutting some of those old growth and encouraging some of the, the uh, underbrush to grow can be really good for that. Oh, yeah, I had that in there. But uh, a lot of people too uh, harvest timber and then reinvest into deer retention features or just look at it as a way to, you know, remove some walnut trees and then reinvest into other general improvements. And uh, a lot of people have had uh, success with that. So, but uh, yeah, that's what I have for you guys. Um, you know, you can check out our website, follow us on social media, and I'd be, uh, just thank you guys all for listening and uh, be more than happy to answer any question you guys might have for me. Awesome. I didn't know there was so much involved. So thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, we do have a question here from Brian. Are the tree pricing an amount that the landowner would get or is there a harvesting fee which needs to be subtracted? There is a harvesting fee and that is just specific to Illinois. That is a 4% harvest fee paid um, payable to the IDNR out of the landowner's portion at the end of the project. And we do have to fill out timber harvesting reports and uh, 
and submit those checks quarterly to the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. Okay, thank you. Everyone, you're welcome to remove your microphone uh, mutes and you feel free to ask or type your question in. Anyone? If nobody's got any, that means I did my job. You did. All right. On behalf of the Cook County Farm Bureau and uh, those folks who joined us here this afternoon, Weston, thank you so much. Hey, thank that you guys. An outstanding presentation. And again, we thank you all for choosing to share uh, your time with us here today. And uh, thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.